The Shooting Range. In this episode, the story of the Fritz X, the first guided bomb in the game. We compare the new heavy Messerschmitts. Hotline, the developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with the long-awaited German top tank, the Leopard 2A4. We hope you guys like German tech, because to our own surprise, this episode of The Shooting Range is all about it. What can we say? The Project X update introduced tons of new stuff, including some long-awaited, frequently requested machines, like the new top-tier German tank, the Leopard 2A4. You almost certainly have had the pleasure of trying out its younger brother, the Leopard 2K, and if you liked it, we have some jolly good news. The 2A4 is even better. So, what's new? First of all, the armor. The tank's defense is boosted by an additional five tons of composite armor. Surely it's not that much, right? Wrong. Actually, it significantly enhances the Leopard 2A4's survivability. The turret armor is especially tough. If you're not hit in the optics or the gun mantlet, you should be safe and sound. The turret can withstand multiple direct hits without breaking any sweat. Even if you suffer damage and the armor is compromised due to, let's say, being shot with an APFSDS in the upper or lower glacy plate, the majority of the crew will survive. Sure, you'll probably lose your driver, but the rest of the crew will be able to return fire. Even if the Leopard 2A4 is busted and crippled, it will not go down gently. However, don't get cocky. Additional armor doesn't mean that the 2A4 is an assault tank now. Charging into battle head-on is a risky business. Borderline death wish. Be aware of how your ammunition is stored. It's right under the lower plates. One precise, well-aimed shot, and you're toast. There are a couple of ways to deal with this vulnerability. One, take no more than 15 shells into battle. Yeah, that does sound peculiar, but it's not some lucky charm BS. Hear us out. If you take exactly 15 shells, they will all be stored in hard-to-reach spots, out of the enemy's line of sight. Front of the tank will be relatively safe, at least from ammo explosion. Second way is much, much simpler. Just be aware of your positioning until you shoot off the excess shells. After all, these precautions are absolutely worth it. The Leopard 2A4 packs a truly devastating punch. Feast your eyes, folks. This beast has access to as much as three types of shells. The DM-12, Heat FS, coupled with the DM-13 and the DM-23 APFSDS ones. Those two have almost the same armor penetration rate, 410 and 425 millimeters respectively, at a distance of up to 500 meters. The main cannon is your usual Rheinmetall L44 120mm. Yay, nothing new, but who cares? It can still wreak havoc like nobody's business. Pity that it can't use smoke shells, but hey, on the flip side, the Leopard 2A4 can reload in a mere six seconds. That's almost a second faster than the Leopard 2K. The elevation angles are too good from minus nine to plus 20 degrees. Couple that with turret rotation speed of 40 degrees per second, and you'll start to see why this tank should be really feared. But alas, everything has a price. Improved defense and offense come with a rather huge trade-off, maneuverability. 
The 2A4 model is noticeably slower than the 2K. Its average speed can go up to 50 kilometers per hour off-road. But that's only if you're driving in a straight line and not doing anything fancy, like multi-track drifting to impress your teammates. On a more complex terrain, the 2A4 will be even slower, probably up to 40 kilometers an hour only. All that sweet, sweet additional armor is to blame. The tank accelerates quite slowly because of its inclusion, so you probably won't be rushing anything with this bad boy. So, how do you play the Leopard 2A4 with maximum efficiency? Easy. Hit and run tactics. Flank the opposing forces, fire once or twice, and immediately change position. Good reverse speed allows you to retreat swiftly, and superb main gun stabilization can be used for sniping on the move. With good variety of shells to choose from, the Leopard 2A4 can be outright deadly even to the Abrams and the T-64B. All you need to do is be patient and avoid direct confrontation. Then you'll get your frags and rivers will run black with diesel. And now, let's celebrate the widening of the in-game arsenal with a story of the newest addition to that part of the game. The idea of a guided projectile was born probably when an ancient human threw a stone for the first time. Homing arrows and spears were just a fantasy for centuries. But when the radio was invented, enthusiastic engineers thought, if we can transmit signals through wireless telegraph, what stops us from creating machines that can be controlled by utilizing said signals? You know what? Nothing really, said Nikola Tesla and demonstrated his remotely controlled ship model in 1898. After that, things quickly got out of hand. Scientists were captivated. Experiments rang wild. Ships, automobiles, tanks, planes, humans sought new applications for radio signals. Only the bulkiness of equipment and its cost held our curiosity back. However, both of those things were improving at a hefty pace. So by the 1930s, the radio equipment was optimized enough to finally fulfill that centuries-old fantasy, magical homing weapons. Namely, guided bombs and rockets. Scary dream came true. In reality, the implementation of the guided shells wasn't nearly as triumphant as it sounds. Schematics were tough to develop, even more so to actually make them work, no matter how much private and governmental manpower was thrown at the task. Transmitting and receiving equipment was imperfect. Radio interference was a problem too. The shells weren't stable in flight without compact gyro stabilizers and unique empennage. Lastly, there was one more, almost laughable matter to attend to. The operators who guided the shells were quickly losing sight of them. After all, the bombs are usually dropped from a pretty high altitude, and oh dear, how many things did engineers try to fix that? Absurdly expensive nose cameras installing traces into the bomb's tail, and many other curios, weird and alike. According to widespread opinion, the German attempts at guided bombs were on the cutting edge of this weapon's race. Well, actually the USA were the true pioneers here. True, their efforts at creating guided explosives began after Germany delved into this research. However, by the end of World War II, the USA's creations were numerous and technologically supreme compared to the German ones. So it was the USA was first managed to successfully deploy an anti-ship bomb with primitive, but nevertheless, 
an active homing warhead. But Germany caught up shortly after. Their first guided shell was the Henschel HS-293, which the Axis forces actively used against the Allied fleets in the closing months of the war. However, their next invention was much more fascinating. The FX-1400 guided bomb, also known as the Fritz X. It had no engine to start with. In fact, it was just a bomb that could be steered remotely. The absence of the engine allowed for an increased bang for the same buck without exceeding weight limitations. And to help the operator see the bomb, it had a built-in bright light and smoke tracer. Simple and useful. German pilots still mostly preferred using the Henschel HS-293, but it was the Fritz X which became famous after the Axis successfully deployed it to sink the Italian battleship Roma. It was the biggest military ship that was ever destroyed by a guided bomb in World War II. On top of that, the Fritz X was the only mass-produced guided bomb that could be controlled through wired signals. As the inevitable arrival of naval battles to war thunder is imminent, we think it's just about time to arm the planes with efficient, guided anti-ship weapons that could be used from safe distances. You know, without the risk of getting turned into Swift's cheese by an AA gun battery. The Fritz X was not the first guided bomb in the world, but it is the first guided bomb that featured in the shooting range. So, it's got that going for it, which is nice. And now, let's get a bit higher, from the bombs and into the cockpits of the new Messerschmitt heavy fighters. The Project X update was like a holiday for the fans of twin-engine fighters. It's understandable, really. Ace pilots finally got their hands on not one, not two, but three different modifications of the legendary Messerschmitt BF-110. Although it's worth mentioning that one of these birdies, the BF-110C7, replaced an already existing one, the BF-110C4. The C4 and the C7 are almost identical to each other, but the C7 is just a bit prettier, sleeker and has a higher battle rating, 3.0, compared to the C4's 2.7. It's a win-win situation for everyone, so let's not dwell on that and talk about the really brand new planes. Let's start with the BF-110 F2. It has a slightly higher battle rating of 3.3, which is reasonable. Two wins over the C7 in maximum speed and the climbing rate by 10 km per hour and 1 m per second, respectively. But most importantly, the F2 carries a lot of firepower on board. In addition to heavy-duty bombs, the F2 is equipped with 12 air-to-air -air RZ-65 missiles and two 20mm MG-151 machine guns. One combined barrage spews 5.56 kilograms of lead per second, two times the power of the C7. Sounds metal, right? We think so too. But there's one huge drawback. You can't equip all your weaponry at once. It's up to you to choose the best tools for the job. But in the current meta, the BF-110F2 excels at dealing with light-armored ground units and interception of enemy bombers. Next, what's up with the BF-110G2? A whole lot, we tell you. The G2 version is more like a flying tank, not a twin-engine fighter. It has even better speed and climbing rates, 595 km per hour and 13.1 meters per second, respectively, on top of the updated forward-faced armaments and turrets. Do you want to surprise your enemies with a literal hail of heavy caliber bullets? Say no more. 
two 30mm MK-108 guns and the same amount of the 20mm MG-151 should be enough. If this is not convincing, you can slap four more MG-151s on top. To put it mildly, that is an enormous firepower. 12.77 kilograms of death per second at the battle rating of, what, 3.7? Oh my, did we mention that you can also equip four missiles with a solid penetration rate of 62 millimeters on top of that? They will be perfect for attacking the roofs and sides of the enemy tanks. At the same time, this loadout still allows you to engage both ground and air units. We didn't compare the G2 to a flying tank for no reason. There is another armament option for this aircraft. You can take a rapid-fire 37mm cannon with an ammo load of 66 shells piercing 140 millimeters of armor from 100 meters and still use the missiles for air targets and the MK-108 forward-facing cannons to deal with the enemy fighters. Somebody said he likes killing the tankers? Well, here you go. It is almost the jack of all trades, but of course, it has some drawbacks too. The G2 is not very agile due to the sheer amount of weaponry on board, and the dual turret MG-81s are far from the get-out-of-jail-free card that will shake off any assailant. How to compensate for that? Just generally avoid those pesky fighters and concentrate on enemy bombers. The G2 is strong when it comes to direct confrontations head-to-head. -head. Try to nudge your opponents into frontal duels. <laughs> If they're foolish enough to accept this gracious invitation, mark down another frag. They won't survive. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. The first question was asked by a user called Yusuf Stalin. Tavarish, is there any chance of adding the T-72 for the glorious Soviet 3? There is actually, Chief. Keep your eyes peeled for the next updates. Ben Sisa asks, How can one get a job to work at Gaijin? Hey there, mate. The easiest way is to check the career page on our site gaijinent.com and send us a word if you think you can do what we need. Then, there is a question from a user called Leslie Grant. Hey dudes, you know how you have those special tanks and planes that were used by aces of WW2? Germany should get the chance to have Michael Whitman's Tiger One. Michael Whitman's one of the best tank commanders of World War II. Hey there, Leslie. Thanks for the idea. We will definitely think about that. Another question today was sent by Steve Gagné. Have a good FIFA Cup, but you can add a button to change the ammo in the cannon, please. Hey there, mate. First of all, thank you. Second, if you mean change the ammo without firing a shot, then it wasn't physically possible in real tanks, so why should it be possible in the game? The only way to reload and change the ammo type in a real tank is to shoot the shell that's already inside the barrel. Well, at least in most tanks it is. And the last very serious message was sent by a player called Jacon Khfa. Let's hope I pronounce that correctly. I played War Thunder and my goldfish was watching. He's a shark now. Good training example is very important. Does it have a name, though? That's it today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on the shooting range. <laughs>